Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, back again with another video, and today I am super excited to share with you my February plan with me and my bullet journal. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'll talk about them near the end of the video, but for now, let's jump right into our first spread. So I already sketched out my spreads, as I always do, just to lay things out and make sure I'm happy with the placement of all the different bits and bobs. So as you can see, I'm incorporating some craft paper into the setup, and I pre-cut my craft paper pieces so that I could tape them down where I wanted them to be and sketch on top of them as well as the regular paper, just so I could figure out the layout of my spreads, where I wanted different elements to live. I always sketch first. I find it helps so much. I feel like any time time that I forego the sketching stage for a spread, I end up not liking one aspect or another. So this is my way to test out different things and be able to easily erase and move different elements so I can be happy with it when I move on to the inking stage. As you can see, the craft paper I'm using is dotted. That's because it comes from my Archer and Olive B5 size Neapolitan desk pad. Once I got those pieces glued down, I am starting in on the first quote page. I actually have three separate quote pages this time and it's something that's starting to happen more often and I don't know why I've been wanting to incorporate so many quotes in my spreads lately. I'm finding them really inspirational. I don't know if it's because I've been reading so much lately or because I've been working on my handwriting and hand lettering. Who knows? But regardless, I do have three different quote pages on this setup, so enjoy. Of course, as soon as I started writing my quote, Yoda decided it was time to visit. As I'm sure you know, if you have cats of your own, they can always tell when you're trying to be very precise and they they have to insert themselves between you and the thing you're working on. It's just, it's a rule. So some scritches for Yoda and then we said goodbye and I tried to finish my quote and then of course Chewie decided it was his time to visit. He hasn't visited us in a video for a while but here he is in all of his floofy glory saying hello, getting his magnificent tail all up in my business. In case you missed it, due to all the feline distractions, this first quote says, I want to be both a home and a vacation to you. As you may have guessed, for February, I wanted to do something a little lovey-dovey. So all the quotes have to do with love. They are the quotes that made me tear up when I read them because they made me think of my husband. Because as you'll know, I am sentimental as all get out. And as for the artistic elements, all of the drawings have to do with hands holding, reaching out for each other, and some sort of flower botanical sort of element. And everything's very simple, line art. All I used for the setup, other than my craft paper, was my Secura Micron 01 pen, and that's it. So very simple as far as the materials go, but definitely a challenge because as y'all will know, if you've ever tried to draw them, hands are incredibly difficult to draw. I don't know why. Hands, they're a struggle. I cannot tell you how many times I was trying to sketch hands and then I just had to back up and turn my head sideways and stare at them and wonder, is that even what hands look like? How many fingers do we have on a hand? Why does the thumb look so long? Are thumbs actually that long? And then looking at my own thumb and being kind of horrified by how long my thumb is, it's a lot. So I would highly recommend using a bunch of references and then also just be willing to sketch and erase and sketch and adjust and sketch. And then also be willing to accept that you may end up inking your hand and it may kind of to look weird because sometimes things just turn out that way and it's fine. <laughs> It happens to the best of us. So for this first quote page, I thought it'd be cute if we had two hands holding by the pinkies, doing a little pinky swear, or I don't know, sometimes when I'm walking around with my husband, we'll just hold on to each other by a single finger, you know, not a full hand hold, not a full grip, just a little linking up. So that's what this is. And then growing out of the wrists, we have some foliage, some little leaves and some simple flowers. These are such an easy flower to draw, just the little curved line with a little dot at the top. Very simple and very cute. Moving on to the cover page, I'm just writing February along the bottom here. Simple monoline font. I've been really into this font lately. And then for the illustration for the cover page, I have two hands that are holding each other, not the full wrapped up around each other grip, but interlacing fingers gently. So this one, for whatever reason, the finger placement made sense when I sketched it. And then when I started inking it, I just felt like I was losing all concept of what hands look like. 
For this one, I added some of the same sort of style leaves to tie things together, but for the flowers themselves, I went with something a little looser with larger petals. These are kind of reminiscent of the abstract poppies that I did in my husband's bullet journal back in November of 2020. That's sort of what inspired this style of flower here. And then I'm just trimming off the top portion of this sort of semicircle piece because I glued it just a little bit past the edge of the page to make sure I could line it up perfectly. And here we are ready to move on to the next spread, which is going to be the monthly calendar on the left side and another quote page on the right side. So again, I have some pre-cut craft paper pieces, so I'm going to glue those down first. And tackling the calendar page first, starting with the header at the top and then adding the days of the week along the top of the calendar. For the illustration on this page, I had an idea of having a hand coming down from the top, holding a rose, and then hands coming up from the bottom, kind of preparing to take it. I wanted something a little different because there's only so many different ways that you can draw hands holding. And because of the layout of the spread, I thought it might make more sense to spread out the artistic elements. So I'm happy with how this turned out. I wasn't sure if it would read when it was done. As you can see, I initially drew one of the arms a little too wide. It didn't really make sense that the wrist didn't kind of taper in after the end of the thumb or the heel of the hand. So I just used my white acrylograph to go over that line. And once that first layer dries, I actually go back in and go over it one more time just to make sure that it's fully covered. I highly recommend having a white paint pen or gel pen nearby on standby for any mistakes. They are a lifesaver. And once that was done, it was time to finish off the calendar itself. So just adding the lines in and then adding the days of the week. I tend to just use my monthly calendar to write out events or appointments, meetings, things that are day specific and events or things that I want to get a bit more perspective on that I want to be able to look at. In a calendar setting, I do have a very visually inclined mind. So being able to see events and deadlines and things like that on a physical calendar where I can see how much time I have between and what weeks might be more busy really helps me with a more detailed broken down planning process that goes on in my weekly spreads. So moving on to the next page, which is going to be our second quote page of this setup. This quote is another one that just really touches me. So this one is, I knew I loved you when home went from being a place to being a person. And I feel this so hard for my husband. He is my home wherever we are. If he's there, we're home. And the cats, of course. <laughs> For the drawing here, this is a really, really obscure, nerdy reference. So stick with me here. This one, I have two hands reaching out to each other and they're just touching their forefingers and their middle fingers together. This is from Star Trek. This is a Vulcan gesture for I love you, and this is what they do. They put their forefingers and middle fingers together. This first came up in the original series of Star Trek that was on TV in the 60s, and my husband and I, when we saw it, thought it was really sweet. And ever since, we will do this. We'll touch our fingers together to say I love you like the Vulcans do, because we're nerdy like that. So that is what this one is. I tried initially sketching it like we actually do it, but it kind of looked like we were both doing like a finger gun at each other. I love a good finger gun as much as the next person, but it looked a little odd. So I rearranged things to make them look a little more gentle and dainty. And then because one of the hands was facing up, I thought it would be kind of cool if the flowers and foliage were growing out of the palm of the hand on this one. It ended up looking a little more wild, which I don't know. I thought it was cool. I liked it. And now that that's finished, as you can see, I am 100% on the train of cutting my pages now. I know. I know. Who am I? If you told me from five months ago that I'd be cutting the pages of my bullet journal every single month, I would not have believed you. But honestly, cutting just a little bit off of the edge of my pages and adding little tabs, a life changer. Being able to flip from one week to the next using a little tab is just chef's kiss. So convenient. It looks so nice. It adds a little bit of detail without having to do anything over the top. And especially in a B5 size notebook, losing just a couple dots of width really changes almost nothing about the usability of these spreads. It's a little more tough in an A5 size, but I have seen a lot of you doing this and tagging me in your A5 size notebooks and you say it works fine for you. So that's awesome to hear that it still works even in an A5 size. Just depends on how you use your weeklies, of course. This time I thought it'd be fun to make the tabs out of craft 
paper, so that's what I did. Ended up leaving just a little square nubbin on the page where the tab was gonna end up being, so I'd have something to glue the craft paper to. And they're secured because you glue the tabs to each other with that little nubbin sandwiched in between. Of course, you could just use pre-made tabs that you can buy and stick into your pages if you want things to be easier, but I like to take the more challenging road and make my own. Once I created all five of my tabs, I'm flipping to the first week and sending it up here. So I'm doing my faux Dutch door rolling weekly as I always do, which uses two full double page spreads. And you take that center page and fold it in half. And then each half of the page vertically ends up being one day of the week with the last section being reserved for your weekly task list. If you're unfamiliar with a rolling weekly in general or this specific layout, I'll link my video where I talk all about it. I go through every aspect that I could possibly think Think about how to use this weekly. It is my absolute favorite weekly. I use it every single month. I've been using it for literally years and never strayed. So if you're struggling to find a weekly that works for you, or if you just want to know more about how the system works, check out that video. I'm adding simple vertical lines to separate the sections that are not on a page break, adding simple headers for the days of the week and the date, and all the other weeklies will look like this, keeping them super simple. I like that the craft tabs add a little bit of detail on the sides of my weeklies without having to think about other creative ways to decorate them. I can just keep my weeklies really simple and practical. Now flipping to the end of the weeklies and I'm adding one more quote page. So for the final quote page, I chose for the first time in her life, she found someone who filled all the empty spaces in her heart, which again, just like the other two quotes made me tear up when I found it and is again, super accurate for how my husband makes me feel. So picked that one. <laughs> And for my final spread, I'd initially planned on doing another elongated semicircle, but I realized that it looked kind of weird because you could see it behind the final tab. And I liked the clean look of the five craft tabs on just a plain white background. So I ended up cutting this to make it a circle instead. And then for my final drawing, I'm having two hands holding kind of similar, I guess, to the cover page, but instead of holding palm to palm, it's holding from the back. It's kind of like the spooning of hand holding. I also initially wasn't planning on drawing the nails on the hands, but for some reason they looked kind of weird without any indication of nails. So I added just some simple lines to indicate where the nails were. I felt like it looked less strange that way. Again, hands are weird. And then for the floral or botanical element, I'm just adding one large flower that they're kind of both holding onto. And this is a larger flower with a lot of petals. It's sort of inspired by a peony. There's something about doubling up your lines for petals and keeping it kind of loose that gives a really nice effect. And that's it for the setup. So pretty simple compared to a lot of spreads that I've done. Definitely still a challenge because hands but maybe a little less ambitious than I sometimes go, which honestly, I need to remind myself that it's okay to do simpler themes sometimes. Before I show you the final flip through of all of the finished spreads, I wanna to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare, as you probably know, is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There are so many different types of classes you can take on Skillshare. Some that are most relevant to me and probably also to you are fine art, graphic design, illustration, and productivity. The class that I'm currently taking is Introduction to Modern Script Calligraphy by Bryn Chernoff. And I decided to take this class because as you'll know, I got a fountain pen recently and I've been really excited about it, but paralyzed by fear <laughs> when it comes to actually using it. I cannot tell you how many times I thought, hey, today would be a great day to pick up my fountain pen and try it out and get used to using it so I can use it more. And then I've decided, mm, no, too scary, not gonna do it today. So I decided, enough is enough. I'm going to take a class on Skillshare and conquer this fear. And so far, it is really helping. This is a super introductory class. Great for those of us who are complete and utter beginners when it comes to using fountain pens and nibs. Bryn goes through all of the absolute basics, which is just so helpful and so reassuring. And so far I'm learning so much from this class. Bryn has multiple other classes that go up in difficulty as you go through them. So I'm really excited to move on to her next class once I finish this one. 
Skillshare is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription and is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads. Plus, they're always launching new premium classes, so you can continue to learn and flex your creativity muscles every single day. No matter what 2021 brings, we can spend it creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes. Find inspiration, connect with fellow creatives, and bring some color and beauty and fun into this new year. Skillshare has also added new live classes so you can experience real-time inspiration as you connect with popular teachers while working along with fellow members. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. And with that, it's time to look at the final flip through. So here are all the spreads for February. I really like this minimalist, simple craft paper and black and white. I feel like this is sort of reminiscent of my new bullet journal setup with the craft and the rust paper, as well as the ink botanical drawings. This obviously has its own vibe. It's a little more romantic, but it still kind of lives in that same world. And I really like how this turned out. It's a little different for me, but you know, different can be good. Let me know what you think of this setup. Leave a comment down below. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. I want to take a moment to thank my patrons for their support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Jess, May, Amber, Eric, Michelle, and Elizabeth. Welcome all of you to the squad. We are so excited to have you. If you at home want to join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye, friends.